Hello, every hello everybody, and welcome to our presentation. We are Simon, Julie, Giovanni, Tamla, and Lars. Uh, first, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the problem analysis, the research design, the macro, meso, and micro environments, the field research. Then we're going to talk about the acquisition with social media, the results, the conclusions, the discussion, and our advice plan. The problem analysis. Uh, our motivation for this study was that we wanted to know to what extent uh, the German market differs from the Dutch market. Specifically, we wanted to know what the internal and external environment looks like and how we can uh, attract more traffic to our website. The problem definition. Uh, we wanted to know if our products could be sold internationally, specifically in Zwolle and Hamburg. This means that we wanted to know, uh, wanted to understand the German and Dutch market and get to know the opinion of the people in Hamburg and the people in Zwolle uh, about our product. Our central question is what are the poss possibilities for success of browningwriting.com in the German and Dutch market and how could this success be achieved? Then the theoretical framework, the potential uh, target group. Uh, we wanted to know um, which group would be more attracted to our product. So we investigated uh, whether that should be uh, the adults, children, or students. And we came to the conclusion that students would be the best uh, target group because they are the uh, biggest, they, you, if you, uh, they use uh, more pencils and pens uh, when you use more <laughs> pens and pencils uh, than the other group. Uh, the sub questions. What uh, the sub questions are? What are the comparisons between the two markets? What are the differences between the two markets? <coughs> and what are the characteristics of micro, meso, and macro environments? Then uh, our research site. Our research site is exploratory, and uh, our research strategy is uh, both field research and desk research. Um, with the field research, we're uh, going to use surveys, and with the uh, um, Desk research, we uh, use different economical models. All right, thank you, Domla. Uh, now I would like to move on to the microanalysis, the research before the research. Uh, first, I would like to start with what and why. <clears throat> now, before going external with our research with um, the meso, macro, and eventually the field research, I, we wanted to go look at the internal elements. So we decided to analyze through the use of a microanalysis in which we um, quite comprehensively tackle the stakeholders, a 7S analysis in which we analyze the company, a SWOT, but also a BCG matrix, ANSOF matrix, and a look at the life cycle. Well, to start off with stakeholders, the most important ones we identified include customers, uh, and customers can be grouped into four separate groups for our company, which is students, uh, who uh, mainly want uh, the possibility of fast shipping, parents, uh, um, a group where the children are usually the initiator, but the parents mostly want a safe shopping environment, uh, teachers who want the possibility to order uh, products of a high quality, and offices who uh, actually want the uh, option to, uh, to buy on a high quantity. Then we have marketing channels, which is a very important stakeholder for us since we have to attract the German market. Um, so we have to pay them and they will provide us with channels on which we can market our service and products. Then we have groups of interests and groups of interests can be looked at through two different uh, scopes. Um, one is uh, local groups of interests who don't, and those are just the people uh, near our company or our physical company who don't want to get uh, interrupted or through, for example, um, noise complaints or uh, things like that, or uh, general uh, groups of interest who want ethical matters to be addressed, such as environmental matters, uh, etc. Um, then we have suppliers who uh, make sure that we get the products to sell. So, uh, and the employees who make sure that we can sell the product. Then we move on to the 7S model. Uh, we decided to analyze the 7S uh, 
uh, elements of our company, which includes strategy, systems, style, skills, structure, staff, and shared values. For strategy, we decided to go for market development, which I will explain more when I describe the ANTOP and BCG matrix. Systems, uh, our systems mostly include analyzing customer behavior and actually tackling customer behavior. Uh, style, now, we are a small team currently with an informal style. Uh, beers after uh, the working day are quite common at our company, creating a, creating a friendly environment. Skills, uh, well, those are our USPs. We want 24-7 uh, accessibility for our website, also with customer service and fast delivery. Then we move on to structure, where we identify that we are a small hierarchy with managers, but we mostly function through function groups, meaning that we have uh, our tasks are divided into small projects and small project groups, such as the product uh, project that we tackled during the last period where we had to uh, attract the German market. Um, staff, well, that is the main values. Everyone is valued and we provide opportunities for development. So the, the employees are allowed to study, but also allowed to develop as a company through practical matters. Then we have shared values. And our shared values mainly revolve about knowing the customer and creating a personal experience. These factors are aligned with each other and thus create an effective environment. Then we move on to the squad, which I will explain in very short terms. Basically what we identified is that being a young company with young employees and a young vision um, is both our strength and our weakness. Uh, being a young company makes sure that we have a fresh vision on what the market needs to innovate and what uh, potential uh, customer groups of our age would like to see uh, as such students. But we also lack the practical experience to really market the product in a successful manner. So study and experimentation is probably needed. Then we move on to the BCG matrix because we have to identify where do we currently stand and what is the best strategy that we can uh, yeah, take on as a company. Well, we first identified that with a relatively low current market share, but a high potential, we are currently a question mark, meaning that we have to market our company very well and really attract an audience. Because if we do that, we go to a star, meaning that we have high potential still in a high growing market, and we are one of the higher uh, players with a high market share. But if we fail to do so, we might go down to being a dog meaning that we are just one of the build concepts with great potential. So to avoid that, we decided to use the strategy of market development, meaning that we will take our current innovative uh, concept and introduce it to a new market, international market, uh, for example, the German market, um, and hopefully get new audiences along the way. Then we move on to the life cycle. And with the life cycle, I mainly want to focus on the concept, not the product, because the products are already way into the maturity phase and might arguably, to some people, will start to digitalize on its way to the decline phase. But our concept with being able to order products online make, makes us still a company in the introduction phase. We are still quite new, we haven't really gone into making profit yet, and we are still building an audience. But as you can see, we are very close to achieving or uh, progressing to the growth phase, meaning that we are very close to uh, really getting an audience, really getting supporters behind us that will put down good money or will stay loyal to us. So. Uh, for the meso analysis, we have used the uh, five, quarters, uh, five forces model by quarter. Um, we've taken a look at the competitive rivalry, supplier power, uh, customer power, threat of substitution, and the threat of new entry. Uh, first, we have taken a look at the com competitive rivalry. Uh, we took a look at there are um, businesses who sell quite the same products as what we are going to sell. We uh, found a, a, a company 
called Faber Castell. It's a company in Germany who sells uh, pencils um, just like us. So, but they are very big, have a very high uh, price range, higher than we than we have. So, in the beginning, they won't be um, a, a competitor of us. If, if we are growing and we're getting bigger in Germany, they will become a competitor of us. Uh, for supplier power, supplier power is quite big in this uh, market because we get our end products from our suppliers. So if our supplier says, we want more money for, our pro for the product, products that we deliver to you, we will have to pay it because if we don't pay it, we don't have any product to sell. Uh, next up, we have the customer power. Uh, customer power is also quite high, but I think that's in every market. Um, if the customers don't want to pay our price, we will have to reduce our price. Um, otherwise, we won't sell anything. But we had, we think we have a solution for this because if we can reach the uh, younger children, they will ask our pencils from their uh, at their parents for it as a gift or just um, something they want, and the uh, parents will buy it for them. So that's our solution for that um, because every parent wants to see their child happy. In terms of substitution. Um, Kind of like the same as the supplier power because we get our end products from our suppliers. So someone from another uh, company could the, um, ask our suppliers for the product. If they just pay, they will get the same product that we are going to sell. Uh, for the threat of new entries, um, you don't. Um, There will be new uh, uh, entry entrants, but not very much because the costs are quite high. Um, you will have to uh, buy uh, hire in new employees, suppliers who can deliver your product from to to the customers. So you will have a lot of cost in the beginning if you want to begin. So you can't just begin with like a hundred bucks or something. You will have to have a lot of money to start. Not, ev not everyone can start a business in this market very quick. Then we have the macro analysis. We use the Pestle analysis, which means uh, we took a look at the political fac factors, ecological factors, social, technolo technological, legal, and just taking a look at the future for Germany. Um, political, uh, we found that Germany has a free trade zone between the Netherlands and Germany, which means that um, there is no extra import costs for um, for uh, Dutch companies, uh, which is a very positive point for uh, companies in the Netherlands who want to sell the product in Germany. Um, ecological factors we didn't find very interesting stuff because it's quite the same as in the Netherlands. On social factors, it was interesting because Germany is a big country, the biggest country in Europe, uh, if you look at numbers, because they have 83 million uh, people living there, so there's a lot of potential um, customers for us. The uh, country is uh, well developed, multicultural, but they want they can really appreciate it if you can speak their language. So that's important for people who work for us, who go to Germany and uh, deliver uh, our products, that they speak German, so they can communicate with people. It will give a good impression of our uh, company. Technological factors, um, not very interesting as well because it's just, yeah, it was developed, but the Netherlands are developed on technological factors as well. So not really much to mention there. Uh, legal factors, um, yeah, it's a business freedom world, uh, country, and they have trade freedom. So yeah, it's a lot of freedom for businesses there. You can do a lot, if you can do what you want, if, if you have put it that way. And for the future, the um, economic future, it's a very bright future for Germ Germany because um, a lot of, lot of people, uh, their um, economic is growing 2.5% every year. So it's, it's looking bright for the country. Right, so the acquisition of social media. Uh, well, firstly, we uh, made a list of what were the most used platforms of social media. And the results were that Facebook topped the chart uh, with uh, almost 86% of the people using Facebook. 
Uh, then second comes Instagram and third Snapchat. Instagram has a 58% share and Snapchat has a 45%. Um, because our target group is students and students mostly use Instagram instead of Facebook, uh, we decided to um, pioneer the Instagram instead of Facebook. Also because there's a lot of competitors in Facebook already and um, Instagram is still a new and developing platform. Um, so yeah, the Instagram account Drawing and Writing was created in week six. Uh, so the approach we took when we started uh, our Instagram account was uh, a comedic approach because our target group um, is students and students um, yeah, are mostly appealed by funny pictures and just having a common laugh. Uh, so uh, here we have uh, two examples of the posts we had. Uh, yeah. The basic theme of uh, what we decided to do was uh, to start a campaign uh, which is called Quit Smoking, Start Drawing, and then uh, just having a pencil in your mouth and uh, lighting it with a lighter. Uh, and then we also uh, had a fun fact with uh, uh, just a stupid fact uh, that says, did you know that uh, Mona Lisa and Vincent van Gogh also used to smoke pencils? just to create a laugh and uh, have people share it with each other because that's the, market, uh, the marketing that we decided to do, uh, which is uh, actually uh, customer to customer marketing in a way. So uh, what are those results of the social media campaign? Uh, well, we took a look at the week seven, so one week, uh, and we generated 113 followers in one week, which is a, a very good acquisition. Uh, we generated 222 likes on uh, our posts, which are eight uh, photos. And we also had 24 people commenting on those pictures, uh, which is also a really good uh, return. Um, Instagram is also a really cool tool because you can see all the insights of people who visit your uh, account. And uh, as you can see right here, you can put a link to your website in it. And you can also view how much people uh, click on that link. So um, that being said, we uh, had uh, in one week time 273 uh, profile visits. And we also saw that uh, 17 people of those uh, 273 uh, also clicked on our website link. Uh, sadly, we didn't have any purchases but it's still 17 people who clicked on the website, which is a pretty good return, if you ask me. Uh, you can also see how much your, um, your posts are being viewed, and you can see that our posts were viewed uh, 1,205 times, and we reached uh, 356 people, uh, so different accounts. So it's, it's possible that multiple accounts can see multiple posts. Uh, so that's why that number isn't equal. Uh, and now I'll give the spotlight to uh, Simon to talk about the field research. Yes, the uh, results of the field research. For this market research, we went to Hamburg and, Bur uh, and Zwolle. And we asked people to take a look at our website and fill in this questionnaire over here. Uh, we asked questions related to what do you think about our products, our prices, uh, what do you think about the website itself, and most importantly, we want to complete to know the result of whether or not there is a market for our website. So this is what the site looked like um, uh, when we showed it to the people in Hamburg, and what was really important to us was that the site was actually usable to the people, so we made sure that everything was nicely translated, everything worked, you could click on everything, um, so that it was actually usable. Now, uh, we asked a lot of questions and the most important ones related to our research I will explain to you now. Firstly, we asked whether or not our products, pencils, uh, um, papers, etc., whether or not people buy them in an actual physical store or in an online web shop. Unfortunately, the majority of people, 70% and 70.6% in Hamburg, said that they would prefer a physical store, which means that most people won't actually buy our product from our website. This also, however, means that we can create more customers through using, for example, social media. 
Uh, next up, the prices. Um, we were really happy with these results because people said that the prices uh, were good and that they thought that we gave a good quality for uh, the money. 82.4% um, said that they thought the prices were agreeable and 85.8% said that they would buy uh, a pencil from our store for in between one and two euros, which are the prices that we have. So that's good. That, that means that most people could be potential customers. Uh, marketing, as we said, we use mostly Instagram and that works really well for us. We've had a lot of customer interaction. Um, but the people that we asked on the streets in Hamburg, for example, they said that Instagram might not be the best idea and they gave tips uh, to use, for example, um, advertisements on other websites, banners, uh, to use advertisements on YouTube, and also maybe on Google. Um, so we'll take these examples and tips into consideration when we uh, want to try and expand the reach of our company. So about the website itself, not the products or the prices, but how, what does it look like? Would you buy something there? Most people said that they like the homepage, um, which is good. Um, that's probably the most important thing because usually when people don't like the, the homepage of a website, they will just click away. They also said that they liked the um, name of the website, brianwriters.com, 85.8%. However, maybe another name would be better because this is a, doesn't really roll off the tongue. Other than that, they talked about how the layout could maybe be improved, um, the colors, you know, we could change the colors to be a bit more friendly, the brown was a bit, you know, boring, maybe create something more artistic with some bright colors. Um, and they told us to maybe give it a more of a friendlier look, so instead of using squares, we can use circles, etc. What could we conclude from this? Uh, there is definitely a place for us in this market, um, but we do have to struggle quite a bit to get there. Uh, we have to take into account all the tips that we got and all the feedback that we got from the questionnaires, and then maybe we can create something that is actually profitable. Right now, uh, 40 people came to our website based on all the efforts we already made, which is quite a lot, and that's uh, pretty good, a good result. However, none of those people actually made a purchase, which is really sad. Um, so the challenge for us is to keep gaining more uh, customers and visitors to our website, but turning those visitors into actual customers. When we have to answer the central question of um, are there possibilities of success for us in this market, then yes, definitely. Um, but we do have to put more effort into things like the interaction, like the uh, colors or layout of our website, etc. And how could this be achieved? Again, by making the changes based on the feedback. Our main challenge is uh, changing the acquisition to actual sales. Then to the question, um, is this re uh, representative? representative? Uh, well, we only conducted about 36 uh, surveys uh, and this uh, number isn't really rep uh, representative for the whole market. However, it does give us a bit of an insight in uh, how it actually works. Okay, which brings us to our last slide of our presentation, the recommendation part, or also a small conclusion. Uh, so we noticed this uh, bump in traffic when we started using social media. Uh, maybe a cool addition to our website would be a live chat function to interact with our customers and um, possibly provide extra service. Uh, so we also had a point which uh, stated that we need a more appealing and modern design of our website. Um, the use of Google Ads uh, will increase our purchasing chance. Uh, then the use of CRM systems uh, will uh, help us with the safe data of customers, which will help us in after sales. And then finally, we will realize these points with a budget of 5,000 euros. But the main focus would probably be the more appealing design and modernize our um, 
or design uh, to generate uh, more customers and to also keep them there. Uh, so this concludes our presentation. I hope you've learned something about drawing and writing and we'd like to thank you for your time.